Today I want to show everyone a limit, which I think is maybe a cruel limit to ask in like a beginning calculus class, but an excellent exercise for a more advanced calculus class. And I think we'll see why I take that view of this limit as we look at its evaluation. So I'll just maybe kind of put the heading here that we want to be really careful with this limit. So it's the limit as x goes to infinity of x over x plus the sine of x. So let's maybe approach this without much care first and see what goes wrong. Okay, so let's note that this is most definitely of type infinity over infinity. And that's because the numerator is approaching infinity and the denominator is approaching infinity as x approaches infinity. Okay, well, how do we approach limits that are of type infinity over infinity? Well, probably, if we're not thinking so carefully about it, we would use L'Hopital's rule. So let's try to use L'Hopital's rule here. And obviously we're building up to something to show that L'Hopital's rule won't work. L'Hopital's rule won't work in this case. But let's maybe just do this for the sake of argument. Okay, so in order to apply L'Hopital's rule, we'll take the limit as x goes to infinity, then we'll do the derivative of the numerator over the derivative of the denominator. That will give me one over one plus cosine of x. But now by taking some sequential limits, we can show that this limit does not exist. So I'll just put that this does not exist to start off with. And then maybe we'll check in this green box why it doesn't exist by, like I said, taking sequential limits. So the first limit I'll take is with the sequence xn equals 2n plus 1 over 2 times pi. So let's notice that those are odd multiples of pi over 2. Okay, then notice for all xn, we have cosine evaluated at xn is 0. Those are all of the zeros of the cosine function. Okay, well, now let's take the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 plus 1 over cosine of xn, and note that we get 1 over 1 plus 0, which is, in other words, the number 1. Now let's compare that to a different sequential limit, and I'll use the same notation here. And that sequential limit will be xn equals, let's see, 2n times pi. So it's going to be all even multiples of pi. And notice that all even multi multiples of pi, cosine takes on the value of 1. So cosine of 0 pi is 1, cosine of 2 pi is 1, cosine of 4 pi is 1, so on and so forth. But now if we take this sequential limit, the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over 1 plus cosine of x sub n in this case will give us 1 over 1 plus 1, which is 1 half. But now let's look at this. 1 half is most definitely not equal to 1, but since we were able to find two sequences that both tended to infinity, so notice that x sub n tends to infinity as n tends to infinity in both of these cases. But yet we got different values for the limit of our like function. That tells us that in fact, this limit does not exist. Okay so, okay, so now pushing that back to our original limit, then perhaps this original limit also does not exist. So let's put down here and I'll say, what about this? Does this exist or does not exist? I'll just put does not exist with a question mark here. And then we'll clean this up and then actually calculate the value of this limit, showing that something went wrong. And then we will see where we went wrong. So on the last board, we used a L'Hopital's rule approach, which gave us evidence that perhaps this limit does not exist. But now let's see if we can calculate this limit some other way, not using L'Hopital's rule, and get some definite value for this limit.
So I'm going to start with the following inequality. We know that the sine function is most definitely between negative 1 and 1. Maybe we could even have a non-strict inequality here if we wanted to. But now we could add x to all parts of this inequality and we'll end up with x minus 1 is less than or equal to x plus sine of x, which is less than or equal to x plus 1. Next up, we can divide by x, and that will not change anything about the inequality as long as x is positive. But we might as well consider x to be positive because here we're taking our limit as x goes to infinity. So for x bigger than 0, we have x minus 1 over x is less than or equal to x plus sine of x over x, which is less than or equal to x plus 1 over x. Okay, but we can do a little bit of simplification on these upper and lower bounds. So let's do that. So this lower bound simplifies to 1 minus 1 over x, and then this upper bound simplifies to 1 plus 1 over x. But now we can take the limit of all portions that we see. So as x approaches infinity here, this thing approaches 1. And then as x approaches infinity over here, this thing also approaches 1. So then by the squeeze theorem, we know that this inner part of our inequality also approaches 1. But that's not exactly what we need. That's the reciprocal of what we need. But that means that if we take the reciprocal, we'll have that our limit is equal to the reciprocal of 1. But the reciprocal of 1 is just 1. So now we've determined that this limit is equal to 1. So we've got L'Hopital's rule. So just let's recall that L'Hopital's rule seemed to say that this limit did not exist, whereas this squeeze theorem argument, which seems more airtight, shows that this limit is equal to 1. So the big question is what went wrong? So let's maybe look at that. Okay, so now we're gonna look at what went wrong here. And we'll do that by looking at the careful statement of L'Hopital's rule. So let's look at the careful statement. And I'm gonna lay this out super carefully with the hypothesis and the conclusion. So let's put hypothesis. And actually, I think this is a fairly good exercise every time you learn a new result in mathematics is to take the result as written in the textbook and rewrite it in a hypothesis and conclusion format. Okay, so the hypothesis for L'Hopital's rule goes like this. If the limit as x goes to a of f of x is equal to the limit as x goes to a of g of x, which is equal to infinity. So this is one special case of L'Hopital's rule. Of course, one could be infinity and one could be negative infinity, or they could both be zero. But like I said, we're just honing in on one here. Okay, so if we have that and the limit as x goes to a of f prime of x over g prime of x exists, so that's our hypothesis, then we have the following conclusion. <clears throat> and the conclusion reads, then the limit as x goes to a of f of x, over g of x must be equal to the limit as x goes to a of f prime of x over g prime of x. So what happened for our problem? Well, for our problem, we had our first hypothesis was satisfied, but the second hypothesis was not satisfied. But that means the complete hypothesis was not satisfied, which tells us that the conclusion was not guaranteed. And that's why we couldn't use L'Hopital's rule in this case. So I've done other videos on the channel where we calculate interesting limits. There should be one on the screen right now if you want to check it out.
and that's a good place to stop. Thank you.